Hello, welcome back. Savalian here, a software dev slash creative. And today we're going to be talking about game stuff, but also design stuff. So after learning a bit about game UI in some of my previous videos, I sort of analyzed the UI on different games. Uh, now I decided to design my own. I guess I didn't just decide it, that was always the plan. Uh, but now it's time, after years of having a pretty, pretty much placeholder UI, it's time to put a beautiful face on my game, Project Caribou, which is an auto chess game. It's single player PvE. I did actually come up with a color scheme and some basic UI elements a while back. I believe that did make it into a different video, but I'll have to dig it up. It, it would have been a while ago, months ago. Uh, but I came up with this color scheme early on of this dark transparent blue for sort of the panel color and then a light blue as an accent color. And I came up with this color scheme because the, the lore behind this game that I haven't really explained in game at all is that this, this town that, that we're protecting as the Guardian is in a very icy cold place. And the reason that the, the monsters are attacking is because they sort of crave the warmth and the life energy of the people in town. So it's kind of this battle between a deathly cold and the, the warmth of life and sort of the color scheme I want to reflect that. So I want a lot of the game to feel very cold, very icy, grays and blues and whites, uh, kind of like snow. And then I want there to be pops of warmer colors uh, for very important things. So as I'm going over this, I think I'll want to integrate a little bit of like an orange or a bright warm purple, maybe. Um, I didn't really do that in this video. I'm just thinking of it now as I'm doing the voiceover. Um, but that's kind of the idea behind the color scheme. And since I came up with these colors before I did my self-imposed masterclass on UI design, um, I did revisit, I looked at them again a little bit more critically, and I decided that I liked how it looked and I felt good about the colors still. So we're moving forward with these. Now I'm using Figma for UI design because it's free, it has a lot of features, and uh, com you know, compared to a lot of other things, it, it sort of just fit what I needed the best, uh, and it was pretty easy for me to learn how to use. This is not going to be a video about how to use Figma, um, but I will be using it in case you're curious what software this is. Um, but as I'm designing, the thing I want to keep in mind most is that I am not a graphic designer, so everything that I make that needs to be sort of handmade is going to take a long time. And I don't have a ton of time, I mean I guess technically I have all the time I want to make this game, it's not on a deadline or anything, but I don't want to spend another like five years making this game because I've made the UI too complicated. So uh, really I want to focus on using these basic colors, using consistent elements that I'm repurposing for different things, and just making sure everything is simple and that when I'm doing a flourish or I'm adding sort of a custom or handmade element, I'm doing it for a reason and that it's really elevating the UI. So just keep that in mind. In this video, I'm working on designing the combat screen, basically the HUD of the game uh, and not any of the menus. So I always start pretty much with anything, not just UI, with thinking about what the objective is, what purpose I have for working on whatever I'm working on. So for the UI, the, the purpose of this is to convey information to the, the player or to let them do something uh, as easily as possible. So as I'm going through this, I'm thinking about what, is the, what does the player need to do on the screen and how can I make whatever that is as easy as possible for them to actually do. And I know one thing I need, I when I initially made this game it was multiplayer and the rounds advanced automatically, but if you've been around here for a while you know that I decided I'm, I don't want to support a multiplayer game, I don't want to support server code separately, and because of that I realized I don't really need to keep the player on that timeline, and I want to let them decide when to advance the next round. Uh, so I need a way for them to do that. 
And this one I don't love immediately. I probably will redesign this bit because I, I couldn't really come up with anything sleek or interesting. So I just put a big button in the middle <laughs> at the top. So this one will probably change. Uh, but the next bit of work I started on is really important and that is the summoning menu. So this is the main mechanic. Uh, this is how players can add units to the board, summon them. And so because it's so important, this is basically the one way that players can play the game is by adding units and then moving them or removing them or leveling them up, things like that. So this is super important. So I spent a lot of time thinking through this one and trying different things. I had previously designed a summoning menu that sort of popped out from the side and I'd wanted to make it really accessible in terms of input. So I sort of had this just big long list that you could cycle through and it would pop the details out on the side. I decided I didn't really like the way that this sat on the screen. I didn't like how it took up so much space um, in the view and so I moved, I moved the menu to the bottom in the middle and it's in the middle because it's sort of the most important thing and I made it a little bit more narrow and thought about how to convey the important information about the units and hide everything it, that is extra and I guess the first the very first thing I did was make sure that players were able to filter this list so the important part of filtering in my opinion is what role that critter plays so I have sort of tanky critters that absorb damage DPS which do damage per second and then heals. So I have these filters portrayed by icons, the asterisk I just whipped up real quick with the pen tool that represents all of them, uh, sort of the wild card symbol for all of them. So I have all tank, DPS, and heals down the side and then I started laying out the individual unit objects on the UI. So I had to decide how much to put here that would be useful information but not so much that it overwhelms people and in the end I came up with a couple things that are important for the player to see at a glance which are which unit it is, how much it costs, whether they can afford it, and what role it will serve uh, on the team. So these things I'm putting visible at a glance and then for additional information I came up with a little panel that pops up when you hover. And I actually had an element I created a while ago that I thought I could repurpose for this detail view. So I grabbed that from a different, um, what, what are these called? I forget what these squares are called, frames? Yeah, a different frame. Uh, and I copied it over and I just started moving things around. And as I was working on this, I really started to think through a lot of the things I learned one thing that came to mind specifically that I followed was from the Diplomacy is Not an Option uh, analysis, review, whatever you want to call it, where we have flavor text, but then we also have this more actionable text. And I made the flavor text a little bit more dim, a little bit, it blends in a little bit more, it's not as important. And then the actionable text about what the moves do. I also want to have it so the numbers and the specific effects will be highlighted with a color so like if something adds 30 shield i want the 30 shield to be a highlighted color uh, i'm not totally sure how to do that with unity's text solution text mesh pro uh, but i believe it is possible so i'll just need to do some research on that and i was also thinking about hierarchy so like how to lay things out in the view so that they sort of followed um, a hierarchy that you can understand by looking at it. So I've got the moves with their little descriptions sort of separate in these little squares and then the more general information is up top. I don't know if that makes sense but I feel like it, it's something sort of intuitive. Hopefully I'm not <laughs> Hopefully I'm not leading people astray because I'm really not an expert, but this is how I was thinking about it. And I started to think about how the UI will behave when it's used, uh, things that will happen when it's hovered on, when something's unavailable. Uh, so like when the units are too expensive, how is that going to be shown? And so I, I made some notes about these. I drew in some little extra states. So like the, the borb cost, the, my currency, the borb, um, will go red and it will dim the screen, or not the screen, it will dim the 
item if it's too expensive. So I started thinking about stuff like that and sort of how it would animate on screen to give that feedback about what the user's doing. And once I was pretty happy with the summoning menu, I addressed the next part of my list, which was showing the player what was coming up. So the, the relative strength of the next wave of monsters. And I, I had a lot of thoughts about how I could do this. I made some notes. Um, I could have done sort of an easy, medium, hard scale, something like that, you know, show the number of enemies. But what I ended up doing, uh, and I talked a little bit about this in the video, the dev vlog where I set this up, but I did come up with a way to sort of generate waves of enemies based on a number of difficulties. So like the way it works is it loops through and it will randomly pick whether it's adding a new enemy or increasing the strength of one that's already in and sort of just go through until the, the difficulty points are used up. So I think I'm just gonna use that number and just call it something to indicate that it's not anything specific. It's sort of just a, a measure of power. So I think I ended up calling it monster power, but I had an early on called it meanness, which I, I still think is funny. I wish the word meanness was a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of a gross word to say. I don't know. But I think you get the point. So I went I went back and forth on how to display this on screen in a way that was succinct, but also showed, you know, like it wouldn't be confusing. And I got this idea to make just a scary icon and put the number in the middle. Um, so I used the pen tool. I spent a lot of time actually going back and forth. I'm really not very good with the pen tool, which is unfortunate because it, it's super useful for making icons like this that you can scale up or down as you need because that's how vectors work. But once I got that in a roughly a good place, I moved on kind of to designing the action phase. So I have the planning phase where you put your units down, and then the action phase where the, the enemies spawn and the units start behaving, you know, in their auto chess way. So during the action phase, I want them to be able to see information about the different units. Uh, but it's a little bit different than what they can see and do in the planning phase. So I started with a copy of the unit details and I started moving things around. And as I was doing this, I realized that my brain was definitely still on the track of the planning phase. Like I just, I immediately, the very first thing I did pretty much was just more planning phase stuff. So I added the ways to uh, like dismiss units or sell them, level them up things you can only do in the planning phase. And so I, I worked on that for a while before realizing, whoops, I'm on the wrong track. And I started moving some things back over to the other frame. What I ended up actually including in the action phase UI was a health bar and a shield bar for units that have shields to show what their current status is. There's little ones, but this just makes it bigger. And I also wanted to show the unit that that unit was targeting. I went kind of back and forth with this. I like UI that's very visual, but sometimes it's hard to come up with something that's universal that you can understand just by looking at it. So I did just end up putting like target and then the name of it underneath. And I decided I didn't want to reveal the sort of behind the scenes special moves of the enemies. So I just made a, a separate detail window for enemy units that just has their health and their target and none of the move info. And the last two things I worked on kind of tripped me up a little bit. It was hard for me to come up with ways to do them cleanly because I'm really not very experienced with this. So the leveling UI was the first one and I kind of fell into the same, the same pit where I was trying to make it really intuitive and easy to understand um, but I wasn't quite sure how so I think I went back and forth with a lot of arrow focused plus focused sort of solutions and in the end in the very end um, I ended up with is this button that sort of pointed to the level and it has the cost for leveling up on it so I think you know, it might not be the, the perfect solution, but I think it's enough that at least once you start playing and you see what it does, 
it will start to make sense. So hopefully that's good enough. And then the last big thing was the element system. So I kind of only half implemented elements because when I, I, I knew I wanted them, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted them to do. And so before I could even design this bit of UI, I had to do a lot of planning on paper about how it was actually going to work uh, because you can't really make UI for something, for a feature, for a game, if you don't know what it does that the UI needs to like tell the player. So I did a lot of planning in just a big text document about that and I think I came up with something that'll be pretty fun and interesting and allow for some variety in the gameplay. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about how that works here because it's kind of off topic. I still need to put a lot of the other pieces in place so there's definitely going to be room for it in future dev vlogs. Uh, but basically the, the part that's important for the UI is that each unit can be assigned an element, one of the six elements that the game has, and assigning the element initially costs money, but after that it just has it, and then if you move it next to other units with compatible elements, it will boost both of them and the elements will become active. So those are sort of the key points, is whether the unit has an element or not, and whether that unit's element is active. And then I also wanted to show overall on your team how many active elements you have. So for that, I came up with this little display along the side. It's kind of inspired by the TFT Synergy UI. It's pretty similar, it's a little bit different, but basically each element that is active gets this circle, and then the number of active connections makes the rings around it more extreme. So I think I'll do ranges of these or brackets. So like maybe one to three connections will get one ring, three to six will get a second one, something like that. Um, depending on, I'll need to figure out how many active elements a, a person can reasonably have in a game to figure out what, what that's gonna look like. But I figured this will be simple enough. And then I'm also gonna have visuals on the board uh, underneath the characters that will show which elements are active, if that makes sense. I had something for this before, but then I made the grid a hex grid instead of a square grid, and so nothing quite looked right, so I have to redo that a little bit. And then, for the unit details to assign the elements and show what's assigned, it was really hard. Like I mentioned, um, this and the leveling UI were both really difficult for me to come up with. But in the end, I have these three different states. So I have unassigned element, assigned inactive element, and then assigned active element. And so I've used this hexagon and I've used these different sort of color schemes to hopefully explain those different states. And then for the assignment, I just have this very simple view. You click the button and it pops up all six along the top and you can click one to assign it. So hopefully all of this is gonna work together. It's gonna make the game easy to work with. I believe that's all you can really do in game. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll get into it and I'll be like, oh, whoops. I forgot this whole feature that you can do <laughs> and I'll have to come back to it, but I put a lot of thought into this design. This, it looks quick in the video, but it took me a couple of weeks to go through all these things, to lay them out, to tweak them a little bit, make sure I liked it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I will have to make some icons. That's the compromise I sort of made with myself, which is... I'm not great at making icons, but I think the UI will really work better if I can do some of this stuff visually rather than with text, uh, like we talked about with Prison Architect where just everything is explained in text and it's like really sort of clunky. Um, so I, I do need to make some icons, that's going to take me some time. It's not really in my skill set, but I'm learning all the time and I think I'll be able to do it. So I'll need to make icons for each of the units, the, the units that you can summon, and then also for the different elements and probably a couple of other things. I'm not totally sure, uh, but that's it. That is how I went about designing 
my game UI for the HUD. And this is all in Figma, like I mentioned. So this isn't real, it's not in the game. I slapped down a screenshot of the game and I just designed all of this right over the top of it. Um, but what this does is it gives me a good idea of how the UI is gonna look, how it's gonna behave. You can do some really advanced uh, like prototypes with Figma. I didn't really feel like that was necessary here, but it's definitely a thing you can do. It's very cool, actually. I've, I've played with it before, but now that I have all of this in, in a mock-up in Figma, I can go in and I can inspect where things are positioned, how far away they are from other things, what size the text is and what color it is and all kinds of things like that. Um, Figma makes it really easy to actually build the UI that you've designed. So I hope this video was fun and interesting and I hope you like the UI I'm designing. I think it looks really good. I think it's gonna be super nice to get this in game, get it moving around, hook it up to some like real, real content instead of all these like placeholder icons and things. I th I'm feeling really good about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm currently doing Game Dev December where I post uh, on Instagram and also sometimes on Tumblr about my game dev work every single day. I'm working on it every single day to make a big, a big push on developing my game. So go follow me over on Instagram if you want to see what I'm doing each day, but otherwise uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like to see more content like this here on YouTube. I'll be back soon with another video and I hope to see you there. Thank you and goodbye. Bye bye bye.